Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, trick series and products. Uh, one of the things that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to review exactly what the formulas were for the different series that we've studied before. And we know two in particular, the arithmetic series and the geometric series. And so remember that our arithmetic series is going to be either n over 2 times it by u sub 1 plus u sub n, or n over 2 times it by the quantity 2u sub 1 plus n minus 1 times it by d. Then remember that we had the geometric series as well, and it looked like either one of these two forms. And remember that these two forms were equivalent, but we wanted to make sure to use one or the other based upon the value of r. So if r is less than 1, then we're using this one so that we can keep everything positive. And if r is greater than 1, we're going to use this one again so that we can keep this fraction or this quotient positive. Now remember also that if we wanted to find the infinite geometric series, so long as our absolute value of r was less than 1, we could say that the sum from k is equal to 1 to infinity of u sub k would simply be u sub, u sub 1 divided by 1 minus r. So let's just take a look at an example of what these type of problems are going to look like. And here's example number 1 taken directly from the book. It says simplify 1 plus sine x plus sine squared x plus sine cubed x plus da 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 plus sine of n minus 1 x. So the one thing that we need to do again is recognize, well, is this an arithmetic series or is it a ge geometric series? And we can just tell just by inspection that this is going to be a geometric series with the first term being equal to 1 and r being equal to sine x. So therefore, being that we know that sine x is generally going to be less than 1, then we can go ahead and use this formula here, substituting the value of 1 for use of 1 and sine x for r. And what we come up with is 1 minus sine t and x divided by 1 minus sine x. Now, what if we wanted to go ahead and find the infinite geometric series of this? Well, we know that the infinite series of this particular series, geometric series here, is just going to be 1 divided by 1 minus sine x. Again, because the u sub 1 is 1 and the r, or the common ratio, is sine x. Now, of course, we just need to be careful though that the sine of x is not going to be equal to 1. Otherwise, we come up with something that is not uh, possible. Now, in part c, it just says if the infinite geometric series is going to be equal to 2 thirds, what is x if x is an element of 0 to 2 pi? Then we just go ahead and do a direct substitution for s of s of the infinite geometric series as 2 thirds. And we know that it's going to be equal to 1 over 1 minus sine x. We can go ahead and reciprocate both sides, solve for sine x. After that, take the inverse sine of both sides, and then go ahead and solve. And then just remember that you're always going to come up with two particular values. One value is going to be given to you by your calculator. Okay, so there you go, trig series and products. Again, we're going to have to make sure that we remember how to recognize what type of series it is. Then you also need to recognize how to, you need to remember these formulas so that we can go ahead and apply it to series that involve trig functions. Okay, so we'll take a look at some of these problems and let's see how we do. See you next time. Bye-bye.